What's going on peeps? It's Nick Johnson, your favorite sports YouTube journalist here, back in here with one more video. And we're going to talk a little NFL playoff action. Now as we all just know, for those of you who are football fans watching on this channel, the divisional round has just come and gone and next weekend will be the conference championship round. Now for the AFC championship, you have the reigning and defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs hosting the Buffalo Bills. And for the NFC, as we have just got the result as of right now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will travel to the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin to take on the Green Bay Packers and league MVP candidate uh, Aaron Rodgers. So now before we get into uh, the details of the divisional round, I want to give you all like a little background of how this um, NFL playoff came about and how we got to this point. So before I talk about that, though. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you just joined in. Hit the like button if you're going to like this video. Hit the subscribe button if you want to subscribe and get more content out of me. Hit the notifications on when you want to know when I'm going to upload my next video. And let me know what you think in the comment section. So with that being said, let's get to it. All right. As the NFL playoffs have come and gone, are still underway, and like two more rounds to complete before the Super Bowl. Now, how we got to this point... Basically, it was everything going on with the whole COVID-19 uh, pandemic ravaging the NFL as I displayed in my many videos for like the last two months and how it was ridiculous. The NFL, during the season, has decided to uh, expand the playoff format to uh, seven different playoff spots, which is 14 total for both conferences. So, with that being said, whoever gets the number one seed will have a first round bye and who has ever... Um, is seeded two through seven will be playing against each other in a wild card round. So with this new expanded playoff format, the second seed, who normally traditionally gets the first round by as the first two seeds in the um, NFL playoffs through tail teams total, is different now because of the whole pandemic. How games have been postponed and canceled and rescheduled this and that in the third throughout the entire season. Hence, we got this expanded playoff format. So. If you see it's two through seven, you'll be playing against each other in the wild card round. And whoever's the number one seed have home field advantage and will get a first round bye still. So with that being said, the first round seeds, or rather the first playoff seeds, belong to both the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, the defending Super Bowl champion in the AFC, and the NFC, the Green Bay Packers. Now for the rest of the seeds in the AFC, you had the, um, the Buffalo Bills as the second seed. The uh, Pittsburgh Steelers as the uh, third seed, and the Tennessee Titans as the fourth seed. So those are your four division champions. Kansas City of the West, um, Buffalo Bills of the East. First time ever in a long time that the Patriots are not in the playoffs. Thank God for that, because I don't trust that roster anyway. Um, third seed, the AFC North champion, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. And the South Division crown belonged to the Tennessee Titans as the fourth seed. And the remaining three seeds had the uh, Baltimore Ravens and um, the Cleveland Browns and the Indianapolis Colts. There we go. The Indianapolis Colts. And in the NFC, the Green Bay Packers, as I said, had the first seed. And the rest of the seeds, you had the, of course... Of course, Green Bay were the NFC North Division champs. And the rest of the seeds, the second seed belonged to the New Orleans Saints, who won the NFC South Division again. Um, the third seed belonged to the uh, Seattle Seahawks for for the NFC West Division. And uh, the fourth seed belonged to the Washington football team, the nameless Washington football team. That had <laughs> no uncertainty of what the identity was going to be. They clinched the division, the NFC East division, and the fourth seed after they uh, beat the Philadelphia Eagles in convincing fashion. And that was expected. So, sorry, I had to check something out. So, yeah, those are your top four division winners. And the rest of the division, and the rest of the seedings, rather, consisted of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as the fifth seed, the Los Angeles Rams as the sixth seed, and finally, the Chicago Bears is the seventh and final seed. And then you had the wild card series. Uh, seedings two through seven playing against each other. Two and seven against each other. Three and six. 
and four against five. So in the wildcard series, you had Buffalo against Indianapolis, Pittsburgh against Cleveland, and um, Tennessee against Baltimore. Baltimore beat Tennessee, earning Lamar Jackson his first ever career playoff win. And um, Buffalo expectedly and wholeheartedly uh, defeated Indianapolis was despite a near comeback from Phillip Rivers and company. And the Cleveland Browns pulled up arguably the biggest upset of the year, and even on all the sports, known for being the trashiest team for the last two decades, came out, pulled a stunner, and shocked the world by beating the Pittsburgh Steelers in utterly and convincing fashion in the wildcard round. Arguably the biggest meme and the biggest story of the year. The Cleveland Browns, a turnaround season, first playoff appearance since 2002, and their first playoff win since 1994. Biggest story of them all. So, yeah. And if you lose to Cleveland in the playoffs, you need a reality check, period. And Pittsburgh does need one, period. And this, and this is something that's not going to be let down when the offseason begins. So, yeah. Anyways, the NFC in the Walker series. Um, you had New Orleans against Chicago. New Orleans won that one easily, as we all expected. Um, Tampa Bay beat the Washington football team. As we all expected to. And a shocker, you had the, um, if I recall, the LA Rams came into Seattle to thump the Seahawks in Century Link Field, therefore ending their reign as um, the dominant playoff team. So, hence the reason how we got to this divisional round. The Bills easily beat the Colts, and Baltimore exacted their revenge against Tennessee in Nashville. So Buffalo went up against uh, Tennessee. No, Buffalo went up, hosted uh, Baltimore. Excuse me, and then Cleveland will go on to play play against Kansas City. And in the NFC divisional round, you have New Orleans hosting Tampa Bay, and arguably the matchup of the century. Two Hall of Fame quarterbacks, both age forty, and arguably what could be the last time we'll ever see those two playing against each other on the same field. You know. And I'll get to that in a minute. And then you had Green Bay hosting Los Angeles. So the outcome results as of last night in the uh, first division taste of divisional action. Um, Green Bay easily took care of Los Angeles in dominant fashion in the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. And will host the NFC Championship game next week as the number one seed. And of course, Buffalo easily dominated um, the Baltimore Ravens, and with that, Buffalo got the last week. Buffalo got the first playoff win since 1993, and have another playoff win. So, Buffalo, as a result of beating Baltimore and knocking Lamar Jackson out of the game with a concussion, um, has punched a ticket to the AFC Championship game for the first time since 1993, which is the fourth and final time. That they made it all the way to the Super Bowl. Because 1993 was like the fourth and final straight year that the Buffalo Bills historically made four straight Super Bowls. As we all remember, and of course if you're a Bills fan, you remember that very fondly. Yeah, the last time that they made the AFC title game, made it to the Super Bowl. Four straight years in the early 90s. 1990, 1991, 1992, and 1993. All made four straight Super Bowl appearances representing the AFC and, of course, they lost all four. So that was the last time they got this deep into the postseason. Now here they are with Josh Allen at the helm. Uh, his favorite target is Stephon Diggs, a solid running game, and a stymied Buffalo defense. Bill's Mafia has all the, the reason in the world to be happy. And now we shift to uh, today's action. In which it was the outcome in one way we expected and one we did not expect. The uh, Kansas City Chiefs managed to escape and avoid a Cleveland Browns comeback, even with the loss of Patrick Mahomes, who got knocked out of the game himself with a concussion. And still, with Chad Henney um, pulling out the uh, all the stops to make sure that Kansas City escapes with a win and will host the AFC Championship game next week against Buffalo. So they managed to escape uh, against Cleveland. Barely hanging on to win 22-17. to 17. And we'll host the AFC title game and we'll have a chance to get back to the Super Bowl for the second year in a row. And 
We now get to the NFC Divisional action, in which we dubbed as Matchup of the Century. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints. Of course, the New Orleans Saints, the NFC South Division champs, came off a win last week against Chicago, came into this game with a chip on their shoulder because with a 12-4 record, they swept the entire NFC South Division. You read that right. They swept the whole division. A record of 6-0 against their division that had the Bucks, the Carolina Panthers, and the Atlanta Falcons. And those two meetings against the Bucks featured Tom Brady. And of course, the match of the century, two Hall of Fame quarterbacks in their both in their 40s. He consists of Drew Brees of the New Orleans Saints and Tom Brady, the great Tom Brady of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Of course, we all know this is Tom Brady's first season playing for a whole new team after spending 20 Hall of Fame career, a 20-year Hall of Fame career with the New England Patriots, giving him God knows how many division titles, almost damn near 20, and um Multiple AFC Championship appearances. Um, eight Super Bowl appearances. No, no, no. I take that lie back. Nine Super Bowl appearances and six Super Bowl titles. The great Tom Brady. You have him against Drew Brees, who also won a Super Bowl title himself. But that was all the way back in 2009 when he carried New Orleans to the promised land against Peyton Manning and the Colts. So, yeah. Matchup of the century. Guys who are known for um, breaking records with one another. Anytime Tom Brady breaks a record, Drew Brees breaks that record himself. So yeah, T- uh, Tampa looking to avenge the um, serious sweep that they suffered at the hands of New Orleans, of which Drew Brees and company lit up the whole place, and Tom Brady had underwhelming to god awful performances in both of those matchups. Heading into tonight, the New in the North in the. Uh, Mercedes-Benz Super, Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. And what we expected to be a classic shootout between two future Hall of Famers. We got the exact opposite. It was a defensive stalemate. Well, rather, New Orleans jumped off to a really hot start on special teams. A field goal. Scoring a touchdown that got them to a 10-0 lead. No, I take that lie back. A 6-3 lead. And then... It became like a offensive output a little bit. And then from that point on, the game was tied at 20 heading into the half. And from the rest of that point, it was all in Tampa's favor throughout the entire second half. They played like a complete unit. Tom didn't have like his usual Tom Brady performance, as we all expected. He only finished with like um, 18 out of 40 some pass attempts. For 200 yards and two touchdowns. And not turning the ball over. Thank God. And uh, the defense of Tampa Bay was like arguably the biggest story of this game. Four different takeaways that they committed against New Orleans. Three interceptions. Three of them were Drew Brees interceptions. And ones that you rarely hardly ever see him throw. And of course a forced fumble. Which was like the key point. Of the entire second half for Tampa Bay that came out with this win. And Tampa won the game 30-20. to Tom Brady will once again, for what feels like the millionth time, will play in a conference championship game. His first time ever playing in an NFC championship game. As he and the Bucks will go on to take on the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay, Wisconsin, in Lambeau Field. Playing in the frozen tundra. The historically frozen tundra. Because it's cold as hell in January. And it's damn sure snowing. So. And and I feel like this will be the very first time. In what feels like a very long time. That the Packers will host a conference title game. Here in the month of January. The last time that they hosted a conference title game. Was when they had Brett Favre. The Hall of Famer Brett Favre. Hosting. The New York Giants in the in the 2007 NFC Championship game, in which Favre threw a boneheaded interception in a first drive of overtime, Giants would go on to win, and of course the Giants would go on to beat the Patriots and end their chances of a perfect season. We all remember that. So, and this is the first time ever that Aaron Rodgers, in what will be his first, 
second, third, fourth. In his fifth NFC Championship game appearance, this is the first time ever he will host one. Because the last four games he's played in the NFC title game were all on the road, especially the one in which he won the Super Bowl, which was the 2010 season against the Chicago Bears. He didn't, and historically, ironically enough, for the guy who was number one all time in career passer rating, he has had his struggles in the NFC Championship games, including the one that he won the Super Bowl, uh, won a Super Bowl with Green Bay back in 2010. He did not have that much of a good game anyway. And his last three basically proved that. He was like a few minutes away from getting to the Super Bowl against Seattle before they had a terrible collapse and lost in overtime. We all remember that in Central League Field against the Seattle Seahawks. They got thumped and beaten down by the Atlanta Falcons in the 2016 championship game, which was the final ever game at the Georgia Dome. And then um, last year, at Santa Clara, playing against his uh, hometown club, the San Francisco 49ers, and they kicked the shit out of him, too. It was basically underwhelming in that one, too. Hell, me and my mother witnessed it. We were shocked at how that one came out. So historically, Rodgers has all problems of trying to put together his best performances when it comes to punching a ticket to the Super Bowl. And this one should be no exception. I mean, Tampa Bay has a uh, lower bottom of the half of defensive passing uh, unit. It was 21st in passing, and Aaron Rodgers should at least, at the very least, take care of that. Because he's hosting a conference title game for the first time ever in his Hall of Fame career. Going up against another Hall of Fame quarterback who has been in the situations before. With God knows how many conference title games he's played in. First time ever playing for a different team. Going into a hostile environment. And he's managed to come away a few times in his career on the road in a conference title game. Only three times he's ever um, won a, a conference title game in his career. Like I said, all with New England. And here in Tampa is a whole different environment. So, with that being said, I am looking forward to see exactly what the conference championship game lay in store for us next week. As once again... For the AFC title game, you'll have the Kansas City Chiefs against the Buffalo Bills. And in the NFC, you have the Green Bay Packers against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the Bucks packers game is going to be like another instant classic. Another set of two future Hall of Famers with Brady against Aaron Rodgers. Another classic of two Super Bowl champions. And of course, whoever comes out on top will not only represent the NFC in the Super Bowl, obviously, but will have a chance to go up against one of the two young rising quarterbacks in either Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes, who's already a Super Bowl champion at this day and age. Because this is already like, what, Mahomes' fourth season in the league and he's already a Super Bowl champion. Josh Allen t- has taken a huge leap from what he was in his rookie season for Buffalo. And he's gotten them to the conference title game. And I'm just looking forward to see where this goes out. Now, in terms of predictions, I'm just strictly going to go with picks. So, realistically, for the AFC title game, I have Kansas City over Buffalo. As great as Buffalo is, they're not. nobody's going to beat Kansas City. Like, <laughs> let's be real. Nobody is beating him. That's, that is a well-rounded, documented team that is basically well-balanced on both sides of the ball. Offensively, they have all sorts of weapons with arguably one one of the greatest young rising quarterbacks in NFL history, in my view, and he deserves all the money. The million-dollar man himself and a great stymie defense who's just as good as any in the league. I just don't see Buffalo realistically beating Kansas City to punch a ticket to the Super Bowl. I just don't see it. Now... In the NFC, I feel this is going to be a toss-up. One of my cousins is actually a Packers fan. And, of course, as a family man within me, I'm going to be, like, right beside her rooting for her because, you know, it's been a long time since Green Bay won a Super Bowl. And and I think they deserve it. But the other side of me tells me that as as much as I hate to admit it, I'm rooting for my ex-quarterback in this scenario, uh, Tom Brady. Seeing him win a Super Bowl title, go for his <laughs> unbelievable seventh in his career, that would be amazing. That would like be the icing of a cake 
on arguably the greatest NFL career we've ever seen. You know? From arguably the greatest quarterback of all time, I'm looking forward to see where this goes out. So, yeah. So, realistically, but to be honest with you, I see this as a toss-up. It's going to come down to the wire, hopefully, between Green Bay and Tampa Bay. You have two good defenses, two good offenses, both two future Hall of Fame quarterbacks at the helm, and one of them wins, will go up against the younger generation. A young quarterback versus the old generation. Now, that, <laughs> that'd be something. Now, in green, uh, Patrick Mahomes versus Aaron Rodgers, two both heavily talented quarterbacks that just knows how to make impossible throws when needed. Now, that'll generate a million dollars, in my view. And it'll be the rematch from the first ever Super Bowl. Because the first ever Super Bowl had Kansas City against Green Bay when Vince Lombardi was coaching the Packers and Hank Stram was coaching the Chiefs. Now, in a whole new different century, in a different generation of football, you have a young coach... In his second year, and Matt LaFleur having another opportunity to clinch a, a clinch a berth in the Super Bowl. Well, Andy Reid is looking to go back to his second straight and his third overall. I'm looking forward to see how next weekend goes about. So those are my picks. Tampa Bay, New uh, Green Bay, I feel it as a toss-up, but in my heart, I, might, I may be rooting for Tampa Bay, but who knows? Green Bay might take it. And in the AFC, realistically, Kansas City all the way. So, yeah, that's all I have for in today's video, and I want to share this with y'all. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more of uh, my videos, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell looking comment button where you can get my notifications of when I'm going to upload my next video. And let me know what you think of the NFL uh, postseason in the comment section. How do you think today went, and what are your picks for next week's uh, conference championship action? Let me know. We got to have this conversation. All right? With that being said, I'm Nick Johnson, your favorite sports YouTube journalist, and I'm out. Peace.